Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, if we can uh, have a seat and start our session. Uh, welcome to Indonesian Forum. My name is uh, Muhammad, uh, Minister Councillor for Economic Affairs at the Permanent, Rep uh, Permanent Mission of the Republic of Indonesia in Geneva. I am here to navigate the sessions uh, as a moderator for the Open Forum. And it is always puzzling to have uh, the meeting at the end of the IGF annual meeting because we may lose many audience. They already have uh, left the conference. Uh, the forum is organized by Ministry of Communication and Information Technology of the Republic of Indonesia in collaboration with the IGF Indonesia, IGF Geneva 2017, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia. Uh, the theme of today's forum is Harnessing Digital Economy Opportunities by Supporting SMEs in Information Technology Adoption. And I think uh, we all agree that digital economy is an important trend in current global economy. As UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres stated in Unctad World Investment Report 2017, and I quote, a key challenge for policymakers in today's global economy is digital uh, uh, development. Digital economy is having major impact on global pattern of investment, end quote. Uh, I think we ha also have uh, had a di deep discussion in, uh, on this issue in the recent G20 meeting in Germany and APEC meeting in Vietnam. Uh, I think by the time I'm speaking, hundreds of, if not thousand SMEs, uh, small and medium enterprise, what we're also familiar with in the name, in, the dif in different name, mis mis micro and uh, small medium enterprise around the globe are dying and shut, their, and shut down their businesses because of the inability to adapt or adjust themselves with the current massive and rapid development in digi the digital age. But in contrary, uh, what exciting too is that hundreds of th or thousands of SMEs also uh, may be growing stronger and stronger and promising because of the ability to develop and utilize ICT in this digital age to support the development or the expansion of their businesses. Uh, here I the figures and the numbers. Three quarters of the population in most developed and emerging economies use the internet. And the penetration rate is approaching 50% across the developing countries. And also uh, digital economies grow in part of people's economic life where up to third people now shop online in the developed and in the developed countries and emerging economies. Uh, digital tools also also are increasingly used by government to interact with the, our own citizen to deliver services. According to the UN e Government Development Index, 90 countries are now offer one or more one-stop portal for public information or, or, or online services, and 1,400 uh, countries have provided at least one form of online transactional services and the internet industry contribute almost four percentage point to the GDP in the largest economies. Uh, those the 70 percent generate uh, the global GDP. But our forum today probably would address the three questions. Uh, what are the programs and initiative and policy of multi-stakeholders to improve the country's economy based on well-adapted IT by, uh, by SMEs? how to develop national digital ecosystem that enabling SMEs to have proper position and bargaining power with the global player or multinational corporation. And lastly, which policy should be prioritized to harness the adoption of ICT by uh, SMEs? We have uh, four panels and allow me to briefly introduce them. On my right, I think uh, Dr. Fang Sing Dong, uh, Dean of International Internet Institute and Cheng Kong School of Journalism and Communication at Santau University. And then uh, Mr. Doni Budi Utomo, expert to the ministry, a minister, Ministry of Communication and Information Technology, Republic of Indonesia. Uh, on my left, uh, Dr. Kurbalia, uh, director of Diplo Foundation and head of the Geneva Internet Platform. He is the leading figure in the ecosystem of internet and Dr. Nivaldo Cleto, advisor to the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. And also Ms. Yang Yang, uh, Deputy Director of International Cooperation Bureau of the Cyber Administration of the People's Republic of China. 
For the guidelines, we have, I think, uh, each of the panel to have uh, five minutes speaking time. So let's start with uh, Dr. Jovan and then followed by uh, Ms. Yang Yang because Ms. Yang Yang has to catch her, her flight at uh, 11.40. So I think, no, that's okay. The, Dr. Jovan start with uh, the first session. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'll make sure that I stay within time limits, otherwise I will affect your travel schedule, and uh, that's uh, it's important. But it is a problem, Mohammed. Thank you for introducing this problem, and I have to speak about Indonesia and to be limited only to five minutes. <laughs> My Indonesian friends <clears throat> know that I, whenever I go to Jakarta, I criticize them for being too shy about their successes, and then uh, I take sometimes the role of uh, being a noisy ambassador of Indonesia, not paid, informal, not accredited. And the reason why uh, uh, I'm particularly uh, keen to promote what Indonesia is doing is that uh, it's based now even statistically in the latest reports of uh, Ipsos and World Economic Forum. And I particularly advise you to consult the Ipsos Academy, uh, Ipsos report on the trust in modern economy, question of trust and cybersecurity, where basically Indonesian government is the most trusted government worldwide by, uh, by its citizens, obviously, when it comes to digital policy. And now the latest uh, WEF report uh, uh, reiterated uh, the same, the same uh, question. Therefore, we have uh, something which is crucial for building ecosystem and for building economy, is trust in policy, government, and rules. And without that trust, uh, the whole uh, system is, is much weaker, and uh, in particular for SMEs to engage and to develop very fast. This is one problem that we faced in the development of the ecosystem, and I would encourage our panelists from Indonesia to tell us what is the secret in building trust, because these days we naively think that trust be built with a few tricks, and, uh, and you have so many sessions how to build the trust, and I'm always very, very skeptical about these sessions, because it takes time, it takes genuine efforts, and there are no uh, management tricks uh, to deal, uh, build the trust. Trust has to build, be built in a genuine way, through the process, through engagement, through enormous empathy and through the developing proper societal and cultural context. Therefore, be, be careful whenever you see the session on building trust. I'm always, always cautious. But in the same time, if somebody can speak about trust building, is definitely Indonesia in digital matters. Therefore, please tell us more about it. Second point from the questions that were raised and posed here, are related to the yesterday's judgment of the European Court of Justice. European Court of Justice, as you know, yesterday uh, decided, ruled, that Uber is not information company, but uh, Uber is a transport company. Uh, this is going to be the major earthquake in the digital economy, because uh, all business model of the Uber and related companies, based on information, has to be changed. Uber basically will have to follow the rules uh, which exist for taxi or bus and other companies. <coughs> what does it mean in concrete case that uh, European Union is trying to, in a way, curb uh, the enormous power that these big monopolies have? And this is one of the questions, how to create more space for, uh, for, uh, for SMEs. Therefore, policy matters. Policy matters in different ways. Uh, cyber security, for example, uh, can affect SMEs a lot. If the requirements of, for cybersecurity rise, big companies like Facebook, like Google, can buffer the, those requests, but not the small companies, especially small, uh, very small companies. This is the first point. Data protection, <coughs> and this is a very often criticism, and I hope that European Union will apply it uh, uh, with some sort of wisdom, this new GDPR, will, which will be introduced, general data protection rules on 25th of May. It's another earthquake which is coming uh, in, the, in the digital ecosystem. And I hope that they will apply it uh, to the major companies that uh, monopolize data, not to small and medium companies, and in particular, not small and medium companies from developing countries. But if they don't do that, the, it will create a problem. Because again, Uber, uh, Facebook, and others can afford to have a big structure to protect their data and to follow the new regulation. Small companies will face the problem. 
Now, the question of, uh, of, of uh, um, um, sort of new policies is, uh, is a double-edged sword, which can help SMEs, but it can also uh, add the regulatory requirements. Therefore, we have to handle it with care, and I think public policy institutions, governments, and other players, international organizations, should uh, deal with these issues carefully. Otherwise, we may end with having more monopolies and stronger monopolies now triggered with the, with the, with the, by new uh, policies, whether it is in cyber policy, data protection, and uh, any other field. Therefore, that would be some, some sort of a, um, a general mapping of developments in the ecosystem triggered by yesterday's decision and the growing role of courts. Courts are becoming, well, I, I found, uh, we wrote in this newsletter this morning, which you can get, we're discussing for four days the 200 workshops internet governance. And then European Court of Justice made decision yesterday, which is the direct uh, role, role making. Therefore, this should be kept in mind that uh, courts are becoming de facto rulers of internet governance all over the world. Thank you, Mohamed. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Yang Yang can have the floor. Well, um, first, I'm so sorry because my <laughs> schedule and to interrupt your speech, I'm so sorry. And then, well, uh, thank you very much uh, to invite, uh, invite me here to give you, to share some information with you all. Well, as a government uh, official, I want to ask here to briefly introduce the development plan and achievements of a digital economy in China. Well, uh, as you know, digital economy has become a most inner, innovative and inclusive field in China with the most rapid development. Well, the Chinese government places high value on, on digital economy and China is uh, vigorously impl implementing the raft strategies for IT application, application, big data, and the Internet Plus Action Plan. And efforts have been accelerated and enhanced to build a digital China with a focus on innovative development. A series of tasks are employed in a plan. So I want I just uh, have to, uh, uh, three minutes about to introduce about the tasks, um, including to build an ecosystem for modern information technologies and industries a ubiquitous system for advanced information infrastructure, a unified and open big data system, an information economy system of integration and innovation, an inclusive and convenient information system that benefits the people, an improved cyberspace governance system, and an enhanced cybersecurity system. The plan serves as a guide for the development of a digital economy in China from 2016 to 2020. So in recent years, new businesses and new models of a digital economy, such as online shopping, mobile payment, and the sharing economy are becoming in China. In fact, the robust growth of China's digital economy reached more than three trillion US dollars in 2016. And let us look at the achievements from the following experts. First, internet infrastructure is increasingly popularized. As of July 2017, China has the largest number of mobile subscribers, totaling 1.37 uh, billion, of which 910 million are 40 users. And aside from uh, more than 5 million websites, are in China. The internet has integrated into the economic and the social development and China's everyday life. Second, the scale of information industry continues to take the lead. In 2016, revenue of China's large scale electronics and information manufacturing industry reached about 2 trillion US dollars and that of software and information service industry reached 4.9 trillion yuan. The supply of information products continues to improve with the output of mobile phones, computers, and televisions remaining the highest in the world. Third, 
The e-commerce enjoys rapid development. In 2016, the transaction volume of e-commerce in China reached about 4 trillion US dollars, with online retail accounting for more than 1 trillion US dollars. The penetration rate of mobile payment and electronic payment ranks top in the world. Fourth, the pace of digital transformation in manufacturing industry is quickening up. The manufacturing industry is becoming more digitalized, networked, and, intellig and intelli uh, intelligent. A number of smart factory and uh, digital workshops have been built, and a set of reliable models for smart manufacturing are uh, explored and established. Fifth, internet enterprises flourish. In the second quarter of this year, the total market value of China's listed internet enterprises reached more than 1.2 US dollar, trillion US dollars. And among the world's top 30 most valuable internet companies, nine are Chinese companies. Six, international cooperation continues to enhance as the chair of the G20 in 2016 China put forward digital economy high on the agenda for the first time and the G20 Digital Economy De Development and Cooperation Initiative was adopted at the Hangzhou Summit. In December 2017, during the fourth World Internet Conference, China and several other countries co-launched the Belt and Road Digital Economy International Cooperation Initiative, which aims to promote cooperation and co communication so that the fruits of a digital economy can benefit more people. And uh, I'm sorry for my limited time, but I have bought some uh, the best the output of our fourth uh, WIC uh, about the best practice uh, we we just uh, collected and uh, and you, if you want, I have given it to the organizer of this one, so you can get someone. And if you have any questions or some uh, want to have some communication, and please uh, give me the email or some some other information, and I'm glad to communicate more with you. And thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yang Yang. The, this is the inter interesting part of the, the, the discussion because we have China and then Brazil and Indonesia that will showcase. Uh, the, how the progress they made in terms of digital economy and digital penetration. Now we turn to Dr. Nipaldo Cleto to present his view on, on this. Thank you. Hello, everyone. In Brazil, we have a unique reality in which over 4,000 small and medium ISPs compete directly with international telecom companies. Within CGI.br, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. We have developed several initiatives that we believe are helping SMEs grow and become more competitive. We offer qualification at no cost for ISPs to migrate to IPv6 so that they can stop relying on legacy systems and become future-proof. Brazil is currently the leader in IPv6 adopting in Latin America. CGI also provides free training regarding accessibility on the web, both to promote inclusion and to reach untapped markets aiming for SMEs to become popular with a customer base that many major companies do not invest resources, resources on. We host regular courses with free or reduced costs for security specialists in order to help smaller business keep, uh, keep up with the lat latest threat uh, and their prevention techniques make them and their customers safer on the internet. I am personally very involved with ransomware protection activities in Brazil, and I am a member of the ICANN business constituency. As far as ransomware goes, SMEs have notably poor backup procedures and do not know or cannot deal with that 
kind of treat. So, I promote talks in which I make them consensus of this incredibly damaging threat to businesses and teach them about ways to prevent and deal with ransomware. In its particular aspect, CGI has, as an extraterrestrial department aiming at protecting system networks, called CERT-BR. It assists SMEs to protect their commercial procedures and keep these procedures secure. As for the business constituency, for quite some time I was its, its only Brazilian member and overall one of two Latin American members. By doing direct outreach on technology events, we have managed to bring in two new members just this past quarter, with more to come. Some. Uh, so, as you can see, there is a lot that can be done, and we do all of that with .br resource, Nick BR, a non-profit civil entity that uses users all its money for the benef benefit of the internet in Brazil. I represent SMEs at CGI, and speaking from my experience, I know that I must play the role of standing up and of having to voice unpopular opinions. I am fine with, the death, with that, as all of SMI should be, because it's true that a lot of decisions are made with major companies in mind, while we are often left in the second plan. We actively have to find spaces within trade associations, class entities, alliance groups, and anywhere else private sector decisions are made. I don't mean that just for our individual sake, but rather as community. Sticking together is the only way for us to have the size and the strength to compete with the bigger companies. <coughs> Security, a hot topic, particularly in developing countries, countries where we unfortunately have high indicators of malicious hacking. While an attack on a bigger company has quite negative effects, for our SMEs it can be business winning, winning because the boss back is that much harder. Investing in cyber security may not show obvious results like other investments. Do, but that, that, but that is the point. If you are safe, there are no incident, incidents to handle and to report. Thank you, uh, Dr. Crito. Now we turn to uh, Dr. Fang and uh, Mr. Doni. Oh. Giovanni, his openings uh, talk about uh, uh, regulatory framework and then how do we build trust in the digital age. And I think it's quite in opposite with the uh, the sense of the market where trust is not really uh, something there because of you know different uh, uh, different uh, calculation. So uh, Dr. Fang will also talk about the competitiveness in in, in China monopoly in China with regard to the uh, digital uh, economy. So it's a turn for uh, Mr. Doni and Dr. Fang. Dr. Fang, first is yours. 大家好，呃，很高兴参加今天的会议。那个，我今天的题目叫“超级网络平台与中小企业的发展”。这个也就是说，这个少数的巨头和这些众多的小矮人怎么样共同发展这个这个和谐共舞。今天由我们陈陈
，中国数字经济发展的历史实际上就是一部中小企业的发展史。就在二十年前，就中国的创业者创办一个十亿美金的公司就是最大的梦想，是吧？但是今天中国有了五千亿美金的这个互联网巨头。呃、uh...。In the past uh, two, uh, two decades, uh, the development inter internet, uh, internet in, the, in the China uh, can, be, uh, can be seen as a um, history of the small medium enterprises in China. Uh, in the past 20 decades, uh, for most of Chinese uh, company, if the market value can attain to one million US dollars, it has become a dream. But now there is um, two uh, Chinese internet company already attain 500 billion US dollars of the market value. 对，然后中国目前最大的优势就是我们拥有了一个十亿用户同时在线的一个一个一个单一市场，是吧？这是新技术、新应用最大的一个试验场，也是我们未来发展的一个一个中小企业发展的一个一个主战场。Uh, especially uh, the advantage of the Chinese market because um. We all have uh, the one million concurrent internet users. Uh, based on the new uh, uh, technology applications and the new uh, uh, usage, so it be has become an advantage of our uh, uh, internet market. The the second point is that, due to the rise of the internet, there are many dynamics in the market that are changing. Because these companies have become the basic providers of the internet for the global economy and the basic services. Uh, now it, uh, the situation has changed because of the rise of the giant in, uh, internet platforms in China, uh, especially the uh, Baidu, uh, Alibaba, and Tencent. Now these three uh, big companies have become the uh, major players to play to provide uh, internet infrastructures for the small medium uh, enterprises. So the main companies in the internet and the traditional companies are basically 营销也好，交易也好，和云计算也好，都严重的依赖于这些巨头的这个、这个、这个、这服务的提供。呃呃 ，now the small and medium prices, including the、uh, new initiative and also the traditional companies, now they are closely related on the、uh, service and the structures provided by these three、uh, big giant internet platforms company. 那么目前来说，基本上是就这些巨头，就是他们在制定规则，然后执行规则。就说这个，实际上存在着很多这个权力滥用的这个这个趋势。呃、uh, ，now they are the major player in the market, so they, uh, they, they now are the,、uh, the policy maker and they decide the rules and people have to follow. So、uh, it has uh, also caused some um, uh, power abuse in the market. 所以从中国的这个就这几年的发展趋势来看。我觉得接下来可能中国也好，全球也好，可能大家都会面临一个最大的问题，就是这些超级网络平台到底应该怎么治理，就怎么样发挥他们的这个积极作用，同时又怎么样能够防范他们的这个权力的滥用。Uh, now the problem is no,、uh, not only、uh, faced by China, but also has kind of a global、uh, problem. And now the、uh, major problem is that、uh, because of the、uh, how to do the、uh, governance of the.、Uh, a uh, giant, uh, this, uh, this big uh, internet platforms. And on one side, we have to uh, negotiate to each other to make this platform to be uh, used uh, uh, collaboratively and effectively. But also, in other ways, we have to provide kind of uh, governance to, uh, to prevent these uh, this companies um, have kind of uh, power abuse. 呃，比如说这个目前很多滥用的这个一些迹象，比如说你在你在杭州，你很多很多商店。你只能用支付宝，不能用这个微信支付，是、啊、然后你做一个平台，你你在阿里巴巴这平台上，你就不能去这个竞争对手的这个京东的这个平台上。呃、uh, ，no， 呃、uh, ，the、uh, power abuse can be reflected in some cases, especially on, on the online payment, especially in China. Uh, uh, this uh, the, the case as、uh, Dr. Feng mentions about it's pick one of the two.、Uh, if you use the、uh, WeChat online payment, that means you have to skip uh, the Jing, uh, the WeChat, the WeChat、uh, online payment. So for the、um, in the most situation, the consumers only can pick one platform to to do the online payment. 对，就是中国虽然这反垄断法已经有十年了，但是迄今为止就是没没有在互联网里面有一期成功的反垄断的这个司法，所以这个法律在现在来说，它还是没有真正的这个发挥发挥威力。
uh, uh, um, although the anti-monopoly law has uh, existed for 10 years, but now there is no effective enforcement in such uh, cases. So uh, the, the, uh, the, law, uh, the, the enforcement is quite poor and, and very weak in China currently. 就是如果這些超級網絡平台的這個治理不能形成一個很好的制度,那麼我覺得中小企業的這個公平競爭也好,這個創新活力也好,以及他們的發展空間也好,我覺得都會受到越來越大的這個挑戰。if uh, the governance of the uh, internet platform cannot be uh, effectively uh, uh, governed, uh, it means that it could not provide a good environment for the small medium prices for their of uh, to provide a kind of uh, fair competition and also a native environment for they to develop in the near future. 我我我想這個問題不僅是中國,這個接下來可能這個這個全球的很多國家都會面臨這個這個挑戰,所以這個問題我覺得它是一個世界級的問題,需要大家一起共同探討。謝謝大家。Okay, uh, the monopoly of the uh, big giant, uh, big, uh, the giant uh, internet platform, the situation not faced only in China, but also kind of a uh, global problem. So this problem should be uh, negotiated from the kind of, uh, negotiated from the uh, perspective of the global perspective, uh, should be negotiated from uh, a kind of broader view. And this is my point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yang. Uh, for the presentations. So now, uh, Mr. Bull, uh, Doni. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First, thank you to Mr. Kurbalija for to keep promoting and telling the good news about Indonesia. And we do believe that when it comes from Mr. Kurbalija, this is not fake news. This is the real good news about Indonesia. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, once the consulting firm McKinsey conduct research and analysis of 20 selected markets around the world, and they found a paradox in Indonesia. One, the one on the on the one hand, netizens in, in Indonesia are the most active on social media compared to other countries, and Indonesia also has a dynamic startup ecosystem. But on the other hand. Indonesia also faces challenges at least in two aspects regarding to the uh, small medium enterprise, ICT infrastructures. Uh, the two aspects is one, the development of its telecommunication infrastructures that as we know that Indonesia is archipelagic uh, country with thousands of islands and uh, with so uh, uh, many uh, challenges in the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, natural ecosystem uh, aspect and the second aspect is about the digitalization of its business sector especially for the small and medium enterprise or SMS since the first challenge about the infrastructures already discussed by our head of delegation Mrs. Secretary General of MCIT during the main session two days ago and for this session, please allow me to deliver the second one. It's about the small medium enterprises and its challenges. Actually, there are 3.79 million of small medium enterprise in Indonesia that have taken advances on the online platform in promoting or marketing its product. This amounts to around 8% of total numbers of small medium enterprise in Indonesia which is total numbers of small medium enterprise in Indonesia is around uh, uh, 59.2, sorry, 59.2 million small medium enterprise. Uh, small medium enterprise also employ uh, many domestically. The number of people working in SMAs has grown to 97.2% of the working population. 97.2% of the working population is work for, for the small and medium enterprise. SMS in Indonesia also contributed around 60.3% of GDP. Therefore, Indonesia has target to growing at least eight, na, total 8 million small medium enterprise in 2019. The challenge then exi exists in growing the number of small medium enterprise by encouraging them to adopt IT, information technology. 
the challenges are not only on how to increase the accessibility to go online, but also how to increase the capability of them. When talking about accessibility, of course, we should also recognize that the most of SMAs reside in rural, rural or village areas with limited internet connection as well as they lack digital literacy. On the capacity side, the key is on how to create product that can compete with foreign products that have flooded to the Indonesian marketplace. The fact is that the Chinese products make up no less than 90% of products that are sold or bought in the Indonesian marketplace. 90% is come from the uh, Chinese product, 5% or 3% is from other countries, and the other 5% is on, comes from the national products. It's only very few of uh, national product being uh, um, circulated in the marketplace in Indonesia. And that's why Indonesia try to prioritize the development of national product quality as well as human resource uh, capacity. To address several issues about SMS and e-commerce in Indonesia, Indonesia actually have a roadmap. Our president last year uh, just released the e-commerce roadmap with following uh, five key points. One is about funding, the second is taxation, the third is about consumer protection, four is about education and human resources, five logistics, six communication infrastructures, seven is about cyber security, and the eighth is about roadmap implementation management. And to strengthen the roadmap, Actually, the Coordinating Ministry for the Economic Affairs recently has formed three working groups. The three working groups include the Trade Ministry to focus on trade to cover export and imports. The second, the MCIT Ministry, they focus on infrastructure for e-commerce, including developing an online platform and ICT. And the working group on payments that include the central bank uh, the Central Bank and the Finance Ministry who will focus on payment system and tax. And what about the potential of the online buyers in Indonesia? So before we, we, we try to uh, deliver the, the potential of the, the, the players of the uh, small medium enterprise go to a market uh, to go to online, now what about the online buyers in Indonesia? The potential user of online shopping in Indonesia can be calculated as following uh, data. According to the last review survey uh, by the Indonesian ISP associations, in 2018, to, sorry, in 2016, there are 172.7 million internet users. If we consider e-commerce as a technology, technological innovation, then we try to employ the numbers with the innovation diffusion theory, theory of uh, innovation diffusion, to understand how the new idea can, can be easily spread and adopted by society. According to this theory, if we target the segment of those who are in the early majority segment category, which is, is 32%, plus late majority segment, which is also 32%, then we will have a total target of potential online shopping customer is about 64% times 172.7 million, which is around 85 million people. 85 internet user Indonesia is a potential numbers who will do uh, online shopping. Interestingly, this calculated numbers is almost the same with the number of real uh, online shoppers, according to the Indonesian ICP Association, based on their survey, we have 84.2 uh, million people that already uh, do the online shopping. But based on the survey, also, even the numbers of internet users who shop online are quite large, but the frequency of transaction remains small. Only 34.8% of online users have conduct transaction with little frequency 
maksimum only once a month or maybe maybe uh, once in two months why do they set it to shop online because like of security the perception of like security the perception of they don't know how to deal with the some technical matters uh, there are some challenges that face in Indonesia so hopefully we can have a, a fruitful discussion after this thank you for your attention thank you uh, Pak Doni uh, we have heard all pre presentation by the panelists now I'd like to open a question and answer sessions uh, to be exact uh, please state your name and organizations and to whom you post the questions among the panelists yes sir Thank you. Uh, my name is Juan Wilches. I'm with the telecom regulator in Colombia. Um, looking at the numbers that you were presenting uh, a while ago, um, we have some similarities. We are a developing country also. Uh, we have out of four people, uh, one of them doesn't have an internet connection, so they cannot purchase online. Uh, the other three have an internet connection, but only one of them is purchasing online. The other two are, are not doing any uh, e-commerce transactions. And one of the main reasons that we found out in a report that we uh, concluded uh, this year is that uh, the lack of trust of citizens on the online purchase is uh, refraining them from, from doing, getting there. Uh, I, I heard Jovan talk about the trust and how Indonesia has worked in trust uh, within the country. So I wanted to know if there's anything in particular that uh, could be an example from Indonesia about how, gov how government has promoted trust in the, in the digital environment, both for SMEs and also citizens, so that probably we can uh, take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, take other two before I bunch back to the panelists. None. Uh, oh, it, it is the case. I probably, I personally like to push my own questions, and, and I, I invite any panelists that may may respond to this. Uh, I think the irony of the progress of the digital economy is also means uh, the potential expansion of automation, where uh, you you rendering uh, all the jobs in economic sectors to robotic or to digitalizations and you more uh, and you lost uh, the job that probably really need by uh, our people so I think uh, I, I, I quote here uh, the report that published by uh, OECD uh, Pricewaterhouse Coopers reported that 30 percent of uh, job in OECD countries are at risk due to automations. So is this really we do need for the digitalization of all ec sector of economies or uh, there is an option either to defend <coughs> the, the right and the interest of the, our own people rather than the, the machine? I think uh, it, it goes to uh, Jovan probably if you want to uh, first respond. I think the other also can respond to this. But let's get back to the first questions to uh, Mr. Don. Uh, thank you for the question, yes. Um, the Indonesian government actually uh, noticed that uh, in the, among the internet users in Indonesia, the, the, the main challenging I don't want to say it's a problem, but the main challenge is, of course, always trust doing doing uh, doing uh, online uh, shopping, uh, like of the like of um, security aspect or something like that. <coughs> so actually, if the the MCIT, uh, we now try to do at least two measures. Uh, um, what we call it, the umbrella program. One is. We, of course, try to uh, uh, promote using the mainstream media 
using the conventional media, using like we, we call it the public service announcements, using the televisions and radio. Uh, we now in in in, in, in on, on going to uh, develop and produce the the promotion campaigns and material. So we will will put it on the televisions, in a radio, in a magazine, and is uh, try to educate, try to uh, advocate the peoples on how to uh, what is the benefit of using the the uh, the, the, the the online uh, shop and how to uh, minimize the negative impact. And during uh, uh, during the the preparation of, of the of the of the content for for promotions, actually we we uh, divided into several uh, what we call it the the, uh, the age. So um, the, uh, for the for the younger, so the content will be like this. For the the people with uh, older than all the others, they will uh, with uh, several. Um, um, content, different content. So it's very segmented and uh, content delivered to the, to the public through the uh, ma uh, mainstream media. But in the other in, in the others, uh, way is we had a, we call it a traditional performance. So in Indonesia, there's a thousands traditional per performance like uh, using a puppet, you know, pu puppet, and also any traditional, traditional drama. So when we went to the village or the rural, we didn't use the mainstream media. We don't use the, you know, like the, 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 the way that you can see in the big city, but we were using the traditional uh, media with the puppet, with the, uh, with the uh, national, um, traditional drama. And when and something uh, like uh, what we call it, uh, something the funny uh, performance, and when people enjoy the the performance, and actually they, they will invite a representative from the government from the MCIT to uh, be in in in, in 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 performance, and they will ask, uh, what do you think about the online shopping? Is it safe? If it's good for the people? Then they they deliver the message using the way that maybe it can be an example for others in this country as well. So that's uh, that's the way that we try to uh, to ensure uh, people can absorb so many uh, information with their uh, their their uh, their way. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. Mr. Jovan. Well, let me just add to this, this excellent story that I learned something new. But a few years ago, I was in Jakarta coming from Europe where there were fortunately tragic terrorist attacks. And I come from the one, um, I think from Brussels or pa Paris it was. And it was uh, like a military zone. And I came to Jakarta and unfortunately there was at that time terrorist attack uh, in, in Jakarta. And uh, well, we landed, uh, I landed at the airport and went through the city and uh, some people warned me, don't go now, it's very dangerous. I said, no, I mean, coming from the, from the uh, regions where the danger is a part of the life. And then, uh, then um, but what amazed me, there were no uh, military forces on the, on the streets like you had it in, uh, in Paris. And then I heard one interesting anecdote, which is, which is really unique, which so imp impressed me so much that I wrote blog post and, uh, and on that that at the point of terrorist attack, uh, the, uh, basically uh, a minister uh, called the uh, leading bloggers and social media people, he called them in the, in the cafe and said, listen, you can write whatever you want. You have freedom of expression, but uh, try to write it, try not to sp uh, spread the fear. Try to find something which is, which, is, uh, which is normal and apparently the most trendy, the, at that time was especially among ladies about some special forces guy who was uh, standing on the corner on the street and about his shoes, something like this, you know. And uh, it was amazing how, first of all, uh, you can do it with the common sense. You don't need to impose and say, okay, we will filter the access. You just gather the people, engage them, and, uh, and uh, call to their sense. Uh, well, nowadays, not so common sense, but sense. 
That was very impressive. Probably that, those small things can make all difference. We always look for the grand policy, grand solution, but small things, especially coming from the high officials like minister and the other high officials. Now, on the, your question on jobs, uh, well, this is, the, this is the major major issue. There are some estimates from 30 to 50 percent of job, uh, jobs that may, may be disappearing. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a big issue because the so-called Schumpeter uh, um, uh, sort of uh, circle, uh, cycle where the jobs disappear and others reappear is not working anymore mm -hmm. because the reappearance of the jobs is slower. In Europe, they're uh, tr trying to introduce universal income that people will uh, get the money regardless the fact if they work or not, mm -hmm. which is a big issue because job is an essential part of defining us as a human. It's not just a way of getting income. In developing countries, uh, the, it will create a new challenges like late, latest closure of the uh, Adidas factories, mm -hmm. uh, which move their production in Germany uh, to completely robotize the industry. Therefore, that, uh, that uh, approach of relatively based on uh, cheap labor uh, mm -hmm. is now challenged uh, in, uh, by, by the robotization of the industry. Therefore, there will be, uh, and this is one of the issues which is so-called known unknown. Mm. We know that something is coming, yeah, but, but we know very little how it is going to, how it is going to develop. Yeah. And ILO, as you know, uh, Mohammed, you're based in Geneva, yeah, is yeah. using this issue as one of the yeah. Uh, tag line uh, for their celebration of 100 years of the yeah. uh, future of work, future of jobs. Thank you, Dr. Jaban. Uh, Dr. Fang and Dr. Keto would like to respond to that too on the issue of automation. So <coughs> what's happening in Brazil? Uh, is, is this really affecting the uh, online market or of offline market actually, uh, certainly? Okay, Mr. Mohamed, uh, I will, will speak in Portuguese and then Mark will be uh, make a tradition for English, okay? Uh, in Brazil, uh, nós temos um, um sistema de, de confiança nos portais de venda de produtos pela, pela internet, no e-commerce. Normalmente, as grandes empresas que vendem no mercado comércio eletrônico, eles têm uma segurança, DNS seguros, uh, empresas que provêm a segurança do usuário para fazer a compra nesses portais. Nós temos uma legislação, nós temos um marco civil da internet que protege o usuário, nós temos uh, leis de proteção do, do consumidor, então isso dá segurança para o usuário colocar um cartão de crédito e fazer a compra na internet. Está aumentando muito o número de pessoas que fazem a compra online. Nós tivemos agora um estouro de compras no, no último dia do Thanksgiving, né, da, da, do Black Friday, que foi um sucesso de vendas, acho que vendeu mais que, o, que, o, que essa época do Natal. Então, a, a recomendação que nós damos, as próprias pequenas SMEs, elas utilizam uh, essas ferramentas para proteger o portal contra os ataques e oferecer segurança para os consumidores. No Brasil, a, as pessoas têm credibilidade para utilizar as compras online por causa dessa segurança que as empresas contratam para fortalecer uh, os consumidores na, na, na compra online. Por favor. The key matter in Brazil is that a set of this, uh, different approaches were implemented to create trust within the market. So there is not only a long running tradition of relying on providers of security for websites of all kinds, of all, of all sizes, but we also have a legal framework, the Marco Civil, which regulates how users <coughs> interact on the internet. Uh, on top of that, several actions are carried out of conscientization of this need for security. So by um, investing within this sector, um, it has been created a culture that allowed um, internet uh, commerce to, to grow. And particularly in this past Thanksgiving during the Black Friday, we had a, a particularly expressive um, uh, surge of e-commerce that um, rivals that of Christmas. And so it is uh, something that has been certainly working. So our advice in terms of how to proceed 
is to very much invest in, in security because that has been a very trustworthy path for Brazil. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kretor. Uh, Dr. Fang, if you would like also to respond to automation issue of digitalization. Mm. 我觉得它一定会超过被这些数字经济消灭的这个岗位 perspective view uh, because um, from the, 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 the development of the uh, digital economy, it provides a more open, aggressive uh, opportunity in China. So um, especially in the big data and also the cloud, uh, uh, cl uh, the cloud okay. computing, it's uh, also pr uh, in the same time, um, in one hand, on one hand, it may reduce some job, uh, job uh, opportunity for some people. But in other way, it opened more and more opportunities for the, uh, new, uh, for the potential people. So uh, the, 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 quick, uh, the critical appointments from my point of view is that it's, uh, uh, and now that the uh, crucial problem is that um, the governance from the uh, outside mono monopoly and also uh, this be uh, governance not only from the business sectors but also included from the um, uh, government's perspective. Uh, thank you, yeah. Dr. Huang. Mm. I think if we don't have any more questions, then uh, we have uh, reached the end of the sessions. Uh, I actually invite all panelists to say the closing, but I think Dr. Japan also fell, uh, are, is in rush to have another panel in the uh, same year thing. So uh, on behalf of the Ministry of uh, Communication, Information, and Technology, I'd like to thank all the panelists for their insight and interesting insight and uh, meaningful contribution to the discussions and also for the audience to participate in this, uh, in this meeting. Thank you very much. Jovan, thank you. <coughs> we have a souvenir, I think, uh, they would like to render to the panelists. <laughs> Uh, 那个, 他们有一些纪念品要送给你